Welcome everybody, my name is John and I'm here to help you be a more confident communicator. Now if you haven't seen me before in any of my other videos, then you need to know why you should trust me. I mean, you're coming to me for five keys to confident communication and you're thinking, why should I trust this guy? He's just some guy with a Star Trek shirt on. Well, there's more to that. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. But I want you to know I've been a corporate trainer. I've been a college professor. I have been in the, the field of professional communication for over 16 years. Really more around 20 years, but definitely over 16 as my chosen profession. I used communication in other professions prior to that. So please be assured that I know what I'm talking about here. But let's get to it now. Let's get to those five keys of confident communication. The first key is doing an analysis of your situation. What do I mean by that? Well, there are a couple of different parts to that. The first thing you need to do is really analyze what's going on here. What type of communication do I need? What type of communication? Do I need to simply be informative with my audience? Do I need to be persuasive to the audience I'm presenting to? Do I want to demonstrate something? Is this some special occasion? Like, am I getting up for a wedding and giving a, a toast? Is this a recording that I'm doing for a YouTube channel? Am I an entrepreneur trying to lure people in so that I can get them to do some affiliate marketing or something like that? I mean, what is it that your focus is on? And that really determines a lot about how you craft your communication. Now, I'm gonna have a lot of videos out about those exact things, about some of those very specific niches of communication that you're gonna to wanna to tailor your communication for your particular niche that you're in, or your field that you're in, or your occasion that you're communicating in. Whether it's written communication or verbal, whether it's corporate or whatever. I want you to know that I'm here for you, so check out those other videos. Okay? But first is analyzing the type of communication. Second is figuring out what setting you're in. You've got to know that ahead of time. If you want to be confident and reduce that nervousness when you're communicating, then you need to be familiar with your setting. So really think about what your setting is, because that also determines something about your communication. Am I going to be writing this? Am I using the spoken word here? Do I need to be more creative or do I need to be more technical in my communication? Which leads us to another thing we have to think about here is audience. That's another part of our analysis here. So far we have types of communication, we have the setting, and now we have the audience. So who am I trying to target with this communication? What age are they? What gender are they? Why are they coming to me in the first place? What's their motivation? Are they opposed to what I'm saying? Because that's going to change a lot about what you have to say. Whether you need to change their minds or if they're already going to agree with you a little bit. That changes something about your communication as well. And the last thing you need to think about when doing an analysis here is the content itself. I mean, certainly whether it's written or vocal is going to make a difference. That's clear. But then what kind of content are you actually crafting? Is it a book, uh, just in the written form alone? Is it a book or is it a blog? There's some big differences in how you have to word things there. And how attentive is your audience gonna be? Are they in it for the long haul, like with a book, or are they gonna stop reading, possibly, after one paragraph because it's a blog? If you wanna make sure that they stick around, then you've gotta craft it well enough for them to stay tuned. So there you have a couple of different ways you need to do an analysis. That's step one to being a confident communicator. Step two is preparation. What do I mean by preparation? Well, I mean actually creating your content ahead of time. Now, a lot of times people will give you a presentation and it'll seem like it's impromptu, but they've actually prepared in advance. And that's really a good way to reduce nervousness and to be confident in what you're trying to communicate. Now, certainly with the written word, that's a little easier to do. I mean, you, you have time sometimes to write 
something. If you're writing a book or if you're writing a blog post, you can do a lot of editing, a lot of self-editing before you actually hit publish, right? But if you're doing something like an email, you might be on a time schedule. There are still good rules to follow when you're writing emails, whether you're writing to somebody above you like a boss or you're writing to people under you that work for you or someone laterally within your organization or to an outside person. There are a lot of rules for great communication if you're doing it in the corporate world, uh, whether it's emails or newsletters, etc. So look out for that video. I have another video on that. But preparation means you've really got to think about ahead of time what you're going to present. Like for this presentation, am I just coming up with this off the top of my head? No, I have an outline. I have an outline of the five steps, the five keys to confident communication. I've got those five things all laid out with a lot of the little subtopics. So I'm going to have another great video on how to do that, but this is what this is what I'm talking about. You've got to be prepared. You've got to write the content ahead of time so you look like you know what you're talking about. I mean, sometimes you don't even know what you're talking about. If your boss asks you to give a presentation on such and such project and you only dealt with it minimally and the main person that did the project is on vacation, that's why your boss is asking you, then yeah, you're going to have to craft a presentation for the client only knowing a limited amount of information. Some of you vloggers out there, you know, you do product reviews and that sort of stuff, but you have uh, a cursory examination of the product but have you used it for years? No. So you, you make an outline of things to look for, an outline of features to talk about in your video. Whatever it is that you're, you're doing for the, the communication itself, you've got to be prepared, whether that's with an outline or fully writing it out. Sometimes, if you're really nervous about it, fully writing it out first really helps, and then taking short notes off of that full outline uh, off of that fully written out thing is a great way to prepare. And then you practice from your notes. So that leads us to our next step, our next key to confident communication, which is eliminating nervousness. Right before the presentation and right before the practice, we've got to eliminate nervousness. So a lot of people get nervous when it comes to public speaking. A lot of people get nervous when they have to record themselves on video. Not too many people are nervous about writing things, but if you're writing to your boss, that can be kind of nerve-wracking, right? Or depending on the, the situation. You know, if you have to lay somebody off, for instance, and you need to write them. Uh, you know, it's always better to do it in person, but I understand if you need it in the written form so that you have a paper trail, you know, that can be kind of nerve-wracking. Well, depending on what your communication type is, there are different ways to get rid of your nervousness. And... For nervousness, really, it's about a couple of things. First of all, you have to understand that there are two sides to nervousness. There's a physical side and there's a mental side. And there are great ways to deal with both. And I'm going to give you a little tip right now, even though I have a whole video on nervousness itself, because that's such a huge, huge topic and a, a huge deal for a lot of people when they're trying to communicate. I'm going to give you a little tip. Breathing exercises. I know that might sound silly and sound crazy, but let me explain. <clears throat> when you get nervous, okay, the physical side of you, what happens? Your heart rate goes up. You start off right here, okay, and then you get nervous up to here, let's say. <laughs> Some people way up here, right? But you start off here and you get nervous up to here. And what happens in between there when you're presenting or when you're getting ready to present is your, because of your heart rate increasing, your breathing increases a little bit, you get some adrenaline released into your system. That gives some of you the butterflies in the stomach feeling. Some of you get shaky knees. Some of you shake all over. Some of you throw up in advance. I've seen it all, believe me, in, in 20 years of, of corporate communication and uh, academia, 
communication, teaching, public speaking, and other courses, I've, I've seen people run out and throw up before a speech. I've seen all kinds of stuff, almost pass out, all that sort of thing. So think about what causes those symptoms, though. Those are, those are all symptoms. Those are physical symptoms of nervousness. And it's all related to the heart rate. So what can you do? Well, you do breathing exercises. Before you go out to present, you do breathing exercises. You lower your heart rate by reducing your breathing pattern. So what you do is you take long, slow, deep breaths. Just like when you're at the gym and you you work up a sweat, your heart rate increases and your breathing increases along with it. There's a correlation. If you, if you lower, if you slow your breathing rate, then you'll lower your heart rate accordingly. So you take long, slow, deep breaths. And I'm talking long. I'm going to give you one as an example. That's what I'm talking about. A long, slow, deep breath where you inhale through the nose, you hold it for a couple of seconds, and then you exhale out of the mouth. And you really elongate that exhalation as long as you can drag it out, as long as you can go. And you do about five to ten of those in a row. Yes, I know, when you first start doing it, it'll make you a little bit lightheaded because of all the oxygen. But if you do it really, really slowly, it'll counteract that. Do it really, really, really slowly. And what you're doing is you're lowering that heart rate. So whereas you started out here before and you got nervous up to here, now you're going to start off here and get nervous up to here. So you're starting off at that lower base level, and that will help you tackle that physical side. Now, there are more tips and tricks. Check out my other video on nervousness for that, but there's a really good one for you. Now, you have to realize, though, that the other side of this is mental. And you have got to psych yourself up instead of psyching yourself out. Too many people psych themselves out when they get up to do public speaking or any kind of communication. They psych themselves out, just like anything in life. Stop psyching yourself out and psych yourself up. Build your confidence by having, having that in you that you want to, you know you want to accomplish something, tackle it tackle it. The same thing goes with communication as anything else in life. Tackle it. There was a, a quote. I can't think of, I can't remember who actually said this. I'm going to have to look this up. I'll put it in the description if I can find it. But life takes on meaning when you set goals and you charge of them with unstoppable force. When you charge after them with unstoppable force and determination that's when life takes on meaning. And the same thing goes with communication and public speaking. When you, when you know you have a goal to accomplish, then you tackle that goal. You go for it. You charge at it. Don't be afraid. Now, I know that's easy to say, and a lot of you are terrified of public speaking. But realize that a lot of that is mental, that you can overcome that. You also have to realize that it's normal. This is normal. You're not abnormal for being nervous. Everybody gets nervous. Everybody. Everybody. Some people will say, no, I don't get nervous at all when I do public speaking. Wrong. You know why? It's because it, physiological tests have shown that every single person, when they get up to do public speaking, their heart rate increases a little bit. They have some of those symptoms. Now, they might start off here and only get nervous up to here, whereas you get nervous up to here or, or here. But everybody gets nervous to some degree. Everybody gets nervous in some way. So realize that it's normal. And when you, when you start understanding that we're all in the same boat together, that we all get nervous to some degree, then that helps a little bit. Knowing that as part of being human, you can overcome it, though. So make sure you check out all what I, all of my videos on what I tell you about getting rid of nervousness because those will help. But realize that it's part physical, part mental, and that it's normal. Okay? That was the next step. The, the next step, so far we've analyzed, we've prepared our content, and we've eliminated some nervousness here. 
the last step before presentation is actually practice. Practice, practice, practice. You know they say practice makes perfect? Well, in a lot of people's cases, that's not true. We know that. We can be honest about that. Certainly, even me, as a professional of years and years, you know, a little bit of practice doesn't mean I'm going to have it perfect. I've made a couple of mistakes in this video. But practice does help eliminate them. Now, if I wanted to, I could give this as a flawless presentation, absolutely flawless, if I practice more. If I'd practice more before this video, then it wouldn't be an issue. I could go straight through flawlessly, wouldn't have to edit anything out, wouldn't have awkward pauses like this one. But practice does help. It really does. You've got to practice. Now, let me give you a couple of tips to practicing, all right? And everything I'm telling you here today, I go into in more depth in my other videos. But I, I'm trying to give you the five keys to confident communication here in short order. Okay, I'm trying to keep this down on minutes. So let me give you some simple ways to think about practice. Okay, so first of all, think about what you're practicing off of. What are you practicing off of? What have you prepared content-wise? Did you write the whole thing out? Okay, great. Practice off of that first. That's not what you want to present off later. We're going to talk about that in a second. But what, what did you write out to prepare? If you wrote out, for instance, a whole speech or a whole dialogue or a whole script, then practice first off of that. And read through it a couple of times just to get used to the flow of information, okay? Now, I do not want you to memorize. This is the biggest mistake. The biggest mistake I've seen students make in, in all my teaching career. The biggest mistake is memorization. Because when you memorize something and then you try to regurgitate that, that memorized information later, are you gonna get everything 100% right? No you're gonna mess something up, right? And think about what your brain does. Your brain, when, when one little thing goes wrong, your brain goes, crap, I messed that up. And then it makes you more nervous. It compounds the nervousness effect because now you're thinking, oh God, am I messing up more stuff? And it kind of compiles upon itself there. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that, do not memorize. Do not trust me. Instead, think about the flow of information. Think about your organizational pattern. If you have in your brain a good idea of the flow of information, then you'll be able to talk about those things in that order. And that's what comes off as being more confident in communication. So don't memorize. Get used to the flow of information. And then once you go off your notes for an outline, which I'm going to have a whole series of videos on note cards and a couple of different methods for you, but one of the best ways is to do it in a way that you're thinking about blocks of information in the order that you want to present them. And that way you make sure you hit all the information you need and you get it in the right order that you need it. That's key. Don't memorize think about flow of information and that's how you practice whether you've written note cards or you wrote the whole thing out you're not going to use the whole written thing out to present you're going to make note cards or some kind of an outline to go off of never read straight off the paper big no-no but practice 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 and once you've practiced several times thinking about the flow of information on the written out thing make note cards and practice off of that. Practice in all the forms of the information that you have. And then, when you think you're ready, then practice in front of people. If you can, gather an audience. You know, gather an audience of your friends, of your, of your kids, of your spouse, of anybody. Anybody that will sit down for a couple of minutes and help you overcome a little bit of that nervousness. Now, sure, they're your friends, but your friends are going to be really critical of you if you tell them to, right? Tell them to. Tell them to rip you apart so you know what can do be what you can do better. You don't want them to be nice to you. They're your friends. You can trust them. 
Have them tell you what to work on so that you can get better. Use that constructive criticism to motivate you to get better. Okay? And then after you've practiced enough and you feel like it's reduced your nervousness some because you're used to the information you're going to present, then actually present. Now here's the fifth key, the fifth key to confident communication. And that is in the presentation, be confident in all the things that, that are around you. Okay, all the artifacts of your communication. So for instance, what you're wearing, what is your apparel? Now, you might think, well, this guy's not wearing a business suit. No, I'm not. If you could see all of my shirt, though, it says, keep con and cling on. Keep con and My son's name is Con. Yes, he's named after Con from the Wrath of Con. Actually, he's named after the reboot of Star Trek. Uh, Con in that one, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, who kicked ass in that role. He was great. Benedict, if you're watching this, yo, man, we need to talk. <laughs> you need to meet my son, Con. Uh, but anyway, this says, keep calm and cling on. Keep calm and carry on. That's the message of the day. That is the message of the day, because it's all about keeping calm and carrying on. And when you're doing that in a presentation, you've got to think about all these aspects so that you can stay calm, okay? So what's going to help you in that situation? Well, first is apparel. If you're giving a business presentation, then you need to dress accordingly. If you're doing a YouTube channel, that's up to you. That's up to your channel. But what message are you trying to get across? I wore this one today, not only because it's a message of the day, but because yesterday was Father's Day and my boys got me this shirt. My son, Con, got me this shirt. So that's one thing, is apparel. Look nice. It makes you feel more confident when you dress up. It does. It's proven. Secondly, think about your posture. If you stand up, and you stand up straight, and you have good posture, then you're going to be much more confident than if you're slouching, than if you're sitting down. You have better vocal projection when you're standing up as well. So posture makes a big difference. And there's one particular video I'm going to make. I haven't made this one yet. I'm going to make one particular video on posture and all the errors that people make while they're giving public presentations. And they look pretty comical. Uh, but I'm going to have to set up the camera, maybe two cameras, one to, to film my feet so you can see what I'm doing and one full body. So I'm going to talk a lot about posture, but it makes a difference. If you stand up straight, you'll be more confident. And then think about your surroundings as well. Are you, are you in comfortable surroundings? If you're in a classroom, what can you do uh, as far as positioning goes? Is there a lectern to stand behind or a podium to stand upon? Is there a place where you need to stand? Don't walk in, back and forth all the time. Try to stand still in a couple of places. Stand still for this part of your speech here then move over here and stand still for this part of your speech. You know, you can actually plan your movement according to your surroundings and you'll look more confident instead of pacing back and forth. We've all seen those, those public speakers that pace back and forth and it drives you crazy, right? So think about your surroundings and plan where you're going to stand. Practice your posture while you're doing it and think about your apparel while you're presenting. There's a lot of P's there, aren't there? Alliteration. I'll get there one day. Okay, then you have to think about your focus. Focus on not what everybody else is thinking, but focus on your content. Focus on your information flow. Too many people make the mistake of focusing on the audience. No, do not think about them in their underwear. Wrong. <laughs> Besides, you'd run away screaming right now if you were doing that with me. But don't think about your audience. Think about what you're there to do. Some of your audience members, they don't give a crap. They could just as easily go to sleep while you're presenting. Well, don't worry about them. Some people are really interested in what you have to say. Well, help them. Think about it as you're helping them by giving them this information that they need. So stick to your focus there. Think about what you want to say and do it. Help the audience members by presenting that information. Think about it that way and stay focused. And the last tip uh, for presentation 
is attitude. It's the most important one. It's the most important one. You have got to have a good attitude about what you're doing. I don't care if you're in a college classroom and you have to give a presentation. Have a good attitude about it. Nobody wants to listen to you whine and complain and piss and moan about something. Nobody wants to listen to you if you're up there and you have a frown on your face the whole time. Or you get up from your desk and you walk to the front of the room slouching and you whisper to yourself, man, this is going to suck. Well, what's everybody else thinking then? They're thinking, this is going to suck. I'm going to tune out. So have a good attitude about it. Be happy that you're helping people. Be happy. Try to put on a smile. You know, think about, I have this valuable information that I want to give my audience members, and while some of them don't care, whatever. I'm going to help the ones that want to listen to me. And that's why I'm here for you folks. I'm here for those of you that want to listen. If you've stuck around this long, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. If you've liked this video, make sure you like it, please, with the little thing, and then subscribe. And you can turn on that bell for notifications, and then you'll know every time I put out a new video. I'm here to help you wade your way through corporate communication, confident communication, relationship communication, international communication. I'm going to help you with all of it bit by bit through all my YouTube videos. So hang in there, be confident, and have fun communicating. Have a great day, everybody.